All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Everything College Football Podcast. Today, me and Nick are going to be doing NFL Mock Draft 3.0. NFL Combine here starts this week. I expect a few guys to raise their stock. Maybe a few guys will hurt it, but I don't expect too much shakeups before, you know, from late February here to late April, I mean, unless we have some drafts or something going on, or uh, trades, that is. Nick, this is a really fun draft. How do you feel as uh, – how much has changed, you know, since the last time we did our last one? There actually is a decent amount that's changed. Some guys have improved their stock just a little bit with the combine coming up later uh, pretty soon that those guys that are already rising might even rise some more. I'm looking at a certain certain player who's an edge rusher that's rising a little bit on my board. He's going to continue to rise, I think, during his combine show, and we'll see how it looks for some guys out there. Yeah, that's for sure. We'll shake it up ourselves this time. I did odds last time. You did evens. This time we're doing vice versa. Who do you have the Jags taking number one overall? So with number one overall, I have him taking Evan Neal, the offensive tackle out of Alabama. I think he is just a fantastic prospect, really protected Bryce Young this year. And the Jaguars have a ton of holes, but you want to protect Trevor Lawrence. That's the most important thing. And if you can get a guy like Evan Neal, who's going to keep your quarterback upright the entire season, you, you can't miss that and you can't skip on that opportunity. you got to take him number one overall. Yeah, a lot of people keep saying it's a no-brainer. They take an edge rusher. I don't think so, including me, who was uh, really close to the program in Jacksonville. I think Evan Neal would be the best way to go. Really good run blocker, a big asset on the round as well. I think Evan Neal should be the pick here for Jacksonville, but it really is a toss-up at this moment in time. Number two for the Lions, I have them going Aiden Hutchinson. Their edge group needs a lot of help. Troy Flowers has not panned out one bit. He's probably on his way out here soon. I think, you know, it's really between him and KT for the number one edge rusher. Hutchinson has violent hands. He's a playmaker off the edge. Of course, he got stonewalled in that playoff game against Georgia, but for the most part, the Heisman finalist earned his worth here, and he's a lock for the top three, I'd say. Yeah, I'm going to take the Heisman finalist over Thibodeau as well. I think he's just a little bit more of a well-rounded player. I have some injury concerns with Kayvon Thibodeau. We'll get to that in a little bit. But I think the Lions here get a really good pick at number two. You know, keep a guy in the state of Michigan, Michigan boy, keep him around. That would be really nice for the fans. I think a lot of fans will like to see that. And He's a very talented edge rusher, and you need to put pressure on the quarterback the NFL, and he can do that for sure. Look at number three, the Texans on the clock. Who do you have them going with? So I have them taking Kayvon Thibodeau. I still think he is a really talented player. I've had I've seen a couple mock drafts of him falling down to ten, and I just think that's insane. Think There's no was, way he's yeah. gonna get that. Far. There's no way he's gonna get that far. He's got to be taken here at number three. Some people like Kyle Hamilton at number three. I've seen that in a couple comments, a couple of tweets. People have been saying that, but I think you got to go edge rusher here when you have a player like that, a former number one overall recruit, ESPN top 100 player, had a good career at, at Oregon. Some injury concerns, like I said, and I'm a little worried about the character. Some of the things he said off the field, of course, some teams may overlook that, but maybe a team gets a little wor- weary about that. I think the Texans, though, take him at three, and I think that's a really good pick for them. Yeah, they could go offensive line as well. I think everything will be fine in that front with Titus Howard. They seem to like him. Larry Tunsil might come back. Who knows? But KT, yeah, I love him. We're relentless off the edge, great length, really good size. You know, um, the UCLA game is one game I keep talking about. He had four and a half sacks. They could not block him. You could have put three guys on him. It didn't matter that game. It's one example of what he can do when he gets going. A USC game, another one, Pac-12 title game from a couple years ago where he was a force as an interior run stopper as well. He can really do it all. When he's got momentum and he's hot, he is tough to defend. I think KT has a lot of upside, but right here he falls to number three. The Jets at four. They went offense their first four picks of last year's draft. I think Robert Saul is going to look to change up things on defense. That's where Kyle Hamilton fits in. Originally it was Derek Stingley the first time we did our mock a couple weeks ago, but I think I've heard some good things about them when it comes to Hamilton. This guy has the size of a linebacker, coverage skills of a defensive back, though, high-end football IQ, incredibly rangy. What else sticks out about Hamilton that you like? Yeah, I love Kyle Hamilton. He was a you know, four-year starter at Notre Dame, very talented player, and I really think that he's the best safety in this class and really good player. You know, Some people had him earlier on fall into the 6-8 range, but I don't think he gets past the Jets now that we're looking at. Derek Stingley's a talented player, but I think Kyle Hamilton kind of fits more what the Jets are looking for here. I think Robert Sala, Sala will go uh, with defense for the first four picks this year. They have two first-rounders and two early second-rounders. But I think Kyle Hamilton's a good way to start this draft. Very talented safety out of Notre Dame and kind of a player that, even though he's in a top ten, I think he's not getting a lot of attention from the from the national media. I don't see his name a whole lot. I think he's a very talented player. I don't want to say underrated because he's a top-five pick, but I just don't think he's getting the attention that some of the other players in this draft class are getting, and he could be a really talented player for the Jets. That's just because he plays at safety. You know, that's the def- – facts on it that's why you see mocks where he falls to the bottom part of the top 10 it's certainly possible positional value is very important but hamilton yeah he'd probably be uh number he's number one on most people's big boards at least early in the year he was great player though the giants they have two picks here 
the Jets, too, have two picks in the top ten. At number five, who do the Giants go with with this selection? So I think they have to go with offensive tackle here, and I go Ike Makuno, the offensive tackle out of North Carolina State. I think he's the best on the board after Evan Neal. Very talented offensive tackle, can really protect the quarterback there, get some good blocking. Daniel Jones got knocked around a ton this year. There's a lot of concerns about that. Saquon Barkley didn't have a productive year. He's getting close to a contract year. So I think the Giants have to go off as a tackle of number five, and I think he's the best fit right now, and I think this would be a good pick for the Giants. Yeah, they haven't gotten much out of Saquon, really because the run game can get going with this offensive line. Oquano, he is a mauler in the run game. He is just ridiculous in that front. Not as polished as a pass blocker, but when it comes to protecting things up front, all around, I like Oquano. He could potentially go number one. A lot of people keep seeing that. I think Neil's slightly better as an all-around offensive lineman. Oquano, though, he can kick the inside. I'm sure Neil could as well, but as a run blocker, he's the best in that front. I think it'd be a great addition to see what they can get out of this run game. Um, and speaking of a guy who's really polished as a pass blocker, though, Charles Cross, number six. He's the pick for me to Carolina. Every mock I do, I have them taking a tackle, and it's usually Cross. This offensive line needs help badly. Um, you can pin everything you want on the quarterbacks, but they have no time whatsoever. The last year or two, it's been really tough for whoever's throwing the football to have any time whatsoever. So this is the obvious pick for me here. Yeah, I think Cross is the right pick here for the Panthers. You know, the record, his his resume speaks for itself playing at Mississippi State. They threw the ball a ton last year. And Will Rogers has really had a lot of time to make good passes and make some good plays. And a lot of that's in, in part due to Charles Cross. I think he's a very good pass blocker of course we're a little concerned about the run blocking because you know Mississippi State doesn't run the ball a whole, ball a whole lot so there isn't a whole lot of film on that but I think as a pure pass block blocker fantastic on the offensive line I think the, the Panthers really need to go with that here at number six this is like they have to take an offensive tackle here and Charles Cross is the best available at this point yeah his talent mixed with that offensive system in the SEC where he is you know he's it was like a thousand plus I think uh pass protection snaps over the last two years and the SEC, all that experience is really going to – it's mind-blowing, I'd say. That's really impressive. That's going to catch some teams. and um, That's going to either lead them to hate him or love him. I love him. I think he's a pick of six. Here we are again with the Giants at seven. Who's the selection? So, for me, it's going to be David Jabo. There's three players here that the Giants could pick, all three edge rushers, but I think Jabo is the player to take for the Giants. Of course, he was partnered up with Aiden Hutchinson this year, so that's kind of damaged maybe his potential to get a lot of sacks because he had to compete with someone who was just an absolute freak on the on the defensive line. But Jabo is still a very good player. Definitely had a good season, kind of breakout year, so to speak, and I really think the Giants get a very talented player here, very very fast player, make a lot of ta- tackles, and the Giants really need help on the edge. Yeah, just the inexperience is a big factor. He wraps up very well, though, for not having a lot of – uh, that experience. He comes off the edge with, you know, with a ferocious attitude, though. I really like how he gets off the edge. Of course, you know, we had Hutchinson on the other side drawing a lot of attention as well. It's the NFL, though. I mean, you're going to be playing with other talented guys around you, so I think Ajabo would be a great pick here. There's a lot of edge rushers that can go to number seven. Ajabo, a little shocking to see him go to number seven. It's certainly possible, though. Turn around at number eight. LSU cornerback Derek Stingley to the Falcons. I think that's a great selection. He's incredibly sticky in man coverage. Him and A.J. Terrell would be a pretty solid duo, I think. This Falcons defense, they need talent. They don't have a lot of depth either, so they need to start loading up on this side of the ball. And I think they'll use this draft to do so. Getting things started with Stingley would be a great addition to this defense. Yeah, I've seen some people say an offensive line for the Falcons here, but I think Stingley's the pick when he, if he falls eight. Very talented player. A lot of people had him in their top three earlier this year but you know his we have some injury concerns with Stingley he missed some significant time the last two seasons but that 2019 campaign he had where LSU won national championship was phenomenal and I really think he's a talented quarterback the Falcons could use a ton of help on defense there's a lot of different holes there and I think Derek Stingley is going to fill one very well for them I think he'll have a very good rookie season if he can stay healthy this is a guy that has kind of fallen down in some mock drafts and I think he's ready to prove people wrong and if he can stay on the plus side when it comes to health he will certainly do that with his fluid coverage skills the Broncos at number nine. You have them taking a quarterback named Kenny Pickett. Why is this the right pick for Denver, who seems to just be a quarterback away from really competing in that division? Yeah, the the, the Broncos really have such a good roster outside of quarterback. There's there's a really they really built that team very nicely, and I think Kenny Pickett is that sort of John Elway type quarterback type of kind of quarterback that he looks for. You know, sort of a pocket passer can scramble though if necessary. He got good field vision. Got a really good game IQ. Had a very talented, very strong year at Pittsburgh this year with a good Pittsburgh team. They won the ACC, of course. I think Pickett's a very good quarterback, and him going top 10 here, of the quarterbacks available, I think he's the one that fits the best 
in Denver. You know, we'll see another quarterback come off the board in a little bit, but I think Pickett fits good in Denver, and he's got to be the pick here for me. Yeah, I think he's got the most well-rounded game of all the quarterbacks right now. I think his accuracy in all three levels of the field is also the most impressive of all the quarterbacks. He doesn't have the strongest arm by any means, but he can really rip it with some nice velocity. Kenny Pickett, I think he's very well-rounded. He really carried that pit offense this past season. He's got great command, great leadership. I think he'd be a really good pick for Denver. Number 10, the Jets. George Kalafitz here. You know, Robert Sala wants to build this defense. I think they could also go offensive line, but I think defense is certainly top priority. This guy is a high-end motor, three-down player. Surprisingly, a pretty great athlete for his size. Kalafitz to the Jets makes sense for me. How about you? Yeah, I absolutely love that he's a very good athlete. You know, three-down player. He's got great stamina. He's going to be on the field the entirety of the game. Very talented in that regard. And the Jets could really use some help on the edge rush, get some pressure on the quarterback. That's, that's something they lack this year. And I think that the defense question marks of the Jets are a little bit more pressing than the offensive question marks. So taking the edge rusher here, especially if Carl Offitz falls to 10, that's a really good pick for the Jets. They could really use a guy like that. That leads us to number 11, Washington. The Commanders now. Who do you have them selecting with their first pick under the new name? Yeah, first pick under the new name. They're going to go for a quarterback, a splash pick with Matt Corral out of Mississippi. Had a great year this year under Lane Kiffin in that high-flying offense down there in Oxford. I think he's a very talented quarterback, can run, can pass, can do it all. I'm a little concerned about the lack of sliding. He tends to try and pick up a couple more yards, and that can put him into dangerous situations where he might get hit, that he should be not unnecess- getting unnecessarily hit. But I think that's something that Ron Rivera can work on. Of course, Ron Rivera worked with Cam Newton in Carolina. And I think Ron Rivera can work really well with Matt Corral. And and Washington is a really talented roster all across the board. Just the question marks, a quarterback. So I think Matt Corral is going to be a great pick for them. That could really help this team. Yeah, I prefer they take a quarterback like Corral here at number 11 than shake up the whole roster to trade for a veteran. Like reports have been indicating, I'm not a fan of that whatsoever. But Corral, he's really a gamer. He's got that moxie you love. Big time leader as well. You remember he played in his bowl game. He didn't need to. That almost cost him a lot of money. Thankfully, he is all right. Good guy, high character player. He has a bit of a loose cannon, though, with that arm outside of the running characteristics you just mentioned. His arm can get him in trouble sometime. Like uh, in the first quarter against Baylor, launches it in the triple coverage. It's intercepted, which he's gotten a lot better at protecting the football. So that was kind of a disappointing play to see, you know, in his final career game. But he's got all the tools to be a really good player. Like you said, he's a terrific dual threat guy. He's got nice velocity, nice rip. Um, Because, again, kind of like Pickett, they don't have – elite arm strength but when it comes to the intermediate the short passing game they can really fit it in tight windows corral especially uh in the right system i think he'll be good i think a run reverse system would be a nice little fit here um number 11 corral makes sense moving to number 12 ahmad gardner it's got to be the pick here every time we do a mock some of these teams end up with the same guys and the vikings keep ending up with the same guy even when i do them um gardner another one of those guys was a sticky press man corner he's played very well over the last couple of years during his college career. Didn't allow a single touchdown. Of course, he got a big step up in competition, but he looked very good against Alabama. I believe that he has the confidence and the skill set to do so in the NFL as well. Gardner to the Vikings, how do you feel? I mean, this has to be the pick here. They need help in that cornerback room. And like you said, not giving up a single touchdown in his college career. I know it's at a group of five level, but still, that is an impressive stat. Yes, he struggled a little bit against Alabama, but as a defender, it's going to be tough to play against Alabama with those talented wide receivers. So I'm not going to knock him on that one. Very high character guy. I like his football IQ. Not giving up a single touchdown is just an incredible stat, and the Vikings could really use a guy like that in their locker room. And this just has to be the pick at number 12. There's no other way about it for me. 13 has kind of gotten interesting with the Cleveland Browns because they need help on the edge rushing front. There's a guy from Florida State that's really been rising up everyone's boards. but They also need help in the receiving game. Which way are you leaning here for Cleveland? Well, I am a fan of the edge rusher from Florida State. I am going to take a receiver, Garrett Wilson, out of Ohio State here. It's clear that Baker Mayfield needs some help. Baker Mayfield is a good quarterback, just sometimes he makes mistakes and he can get a little ahead of himself, and he doesn't have, didn't quite have the receivers this year without once OBJ left. Garrett Wilson is a really talented receiver out of Ohio State, great route runner, very talented in that regard, great football IQ, and I really think that he's the type of player that Baker Mayfield could, could need and really help him kind of take that next step that we're hoping Baker Mayfield takes if you're a Browns fan because he, he regressed this year. It didn't look that great at times. And if you get a receiver like Garrett Wilson, then that could really help him his confidence and really help him on the field. Yeah, I remember watching that Ravens game late last year where he was doing everything for him. The defense was as well, but nobody could catch a pass, it seemed. Nobody could get open, no separation. Garrett Wilson will certainly create that. He's not the burner like Jameson Williams is, who would probably be the ideal pick here, but an ACL I think drops him a bit. 
We also know, put him in the slot. He's twitchy. Heck of an athlete. Great leaping ability. He can make plays on the perimeter. So I think Garrett Wilson will be all around a great pick here for Cleveland. And that guy from Florida State, we keep raving about Jermaine Johnson. We both love him. Should I explain why or should you? Uh, you can do the honors. Yeah, you know, this guy has terrific bend off the edge. He's incredibly explosive. He plays with so much confidence. He was a first-team All-American this past season where nobody probably even knew that. Like, that's how quiet of a season he had, but it was still terrific. He almost had 20 tackles for loss. He even put some moves on Ike McQuanu. Like, he is the real deal. I think he could potentially crack the top 10 here, the size, the length. It's pretty underrated. I think he's a terrific player. 14 to the Ravens would be an A-plus move with two guys in Campbell and Houston about to hit the open market, I believe, or the end of their careers. If he could sit there on the Ravens and learn some things, the Ravens always tend to have some of these high-flying defenders on that side of the ball, and Johnson would certainly be the next one up. Yeah, there's not a lot more I can say about him. We've, we've talked about him at length in both our previous mock drafts and the edge rushing, ranking the edge rushers. Absolutely love this guy, you know. Former Juco player, then did it at Georgia, then did it at Florida State. It was really that star in what was a terrible Florida State team this year. If you watch the film, he stands out on defense. He was doing it constantly. An athlete, three-down player, just super talented. And I, I I love him. At 14, that's an A-plus pick for me. He could he could easily crack the top 10, I think. You know, you look at the Giants, maybe he might get up there if he's a strong combine, maybe 10 to the Jets. But if he doesn't, if he stays at 14 to, to the Ravens, that is such a great pick for me. It'll be an A-plus pick. Yeah, he's blowing minds at the Senior Bowl a couple weeks ago with Mobile. He doesn't—he's not even that powerful either. So when he adds some more bulkiness to look out NFL. Um, moving to the Eagles, they have three picks here coming up. First one, we went with Tyler Linderbaum once again. We didn't change up too much things when it came to the Eagles here compared to our last mock draft. Jason Kelsey, pretty sure this is his last year on contract. I'm pretty sure he'll probably retire after this. We'll see what happens with Linderbaum. He makes sense as the ideal guy to replace Kelsey. I'm not really sure how he fits in at guard, but I have that most confidence that he can anchor any O-line. And I'd put him anywhere on the interior, really, even though the size is a bit of a concern. Yeah, I think the Eagles have a real opportunity with these three picks, three picks within the first, within five picks to kind of rebuild their team and re- retool and kind of be in contention in the, in the NFC East. And taking a guy like Linderbaum, who had a really good year at Iowa, very talented interior offensive lineman, could really help with that. Make sure you protect Jalen Hurts if he's the future. I think this is a great pick here, and I think their next pick will also be a really good pick. Linderbaum is a so- solid pick, and when you have three picks like this in short succession, you can really get some good value here and really build your roster. Yeah, Howie Roseman, phenomenal job. They just made the playoffs, and they have three picks here in the first round. That's just phenomenal work from Howie Roseman, who helped win a Super Bowl a couple years ago with a phenomenal roster he built. Moving to number 16, I have them taking Andrew Booth, an athletic freak at corner. You're not really a man coverage guy. He's more of a fluid zone corner. I like what he provides in that asset of the game, aspect of the game, that is. Darius Slay on the other side. I think him and Booth could be a pretty solid corner in this division moving forward. Yeah, Booth has kind of flown up my, my charts recently. I actually really like him a lot. One of my favorite players. I think when you pair him up, like you said, in that cornerback room, that is exactly what they're going to need in Philadelphia. And at 16, it's a really good pick for them. I love his film at Clemson. They didn't have a great year this year, but he was really good on defense, looked good across – the board and I really think this is a good pick for the Eagles 17 the Chargers they really have an opportunity to make some big splashes in this draft some of the guys we've been targeting when we did mocks with the Chargers I think their roster could really come out looking good number 17 N'Kobe Dean was the selection this run defense was just not very good last year N'Kobe Dean powerful upper body he's a bit of a smaller guy but he fights hard he's a leader he's a terrific run stopper I thought he was the best in college football in that category I think he'd be a big asset to this defense yeah the run stopping was just terrible for the Chargers this year and like you said he's a the best run stopper in college football very talented player out of Georgia a little concerned about the size but I think he'll be a great linebacker for them they could really use the help on that run defense and at this point this looks like the best pick he'd be an immediate impact starter I think he'd be one of the biggest impact starters for the Chargers here out of anybody in the first round number 18 the Saints Jamison Williams was the selection for me Put him in the slot with uh, Michael Thomas, who has expressed plenty of interest in coming back. That'd be pretty scary for everyone in the NFL if you have that type of speed in the slot. With MT, you can do a lot of things on the outside. This seems like a slam dunk of a pick. Yeah, this is the first time in a while the Saints have serious questions on their roster. And I think if you can bring in Jamison Williams, I know we have the injury concerns. But if you bring in a guy like that who has a lot of speed, very talented player, he is going to burn some defenders in the NFL. and could be a really good player to have in your wide receiver core. 
and that can help the Saints kind of push them as they kind of start this little mini rebuild with a new coach. And we don't really know what the quarterback situation is yet, but Jameson Williams, very good wide receiver, had a great year at Alabama prior to the injury and would be a great pick at 18. Yeah, the Saints roster in terms of skilled positions is probably one of the worst, I'd say, in terms of depth in the NFL. Of course, they have Camara and MT, but other than that, there's not much, and that really shielded this past year. Moving to the Eagles at 19, who do you have them going with? So I haven't taken Devin Lloyd, the linebacker out of Utah. I think he's a really talented linebacker, very good at the run stopping as well. You know, the Eagles could use some linebacking help. It's a little looking a little thin in that department. They could use some help there, and I think he's a very talented player, very great linebacker in the Pac-12. Looked really good this year. Of course, Utah won the Pac-12, had a really strong season. I think this is a good fit for them with the 19th pick. You know, this is their third pick in the first round. If you kind of get a guy like Devin Lloyd as your third pick in the first round, a lot of teams would be happy just to take him in general. I would be thrilled if I'm an Eagles fan with this pick. Yeah, I love what Lloyd does. He was one of my favorite players coming into the season because not a lot of people talk about him, but he's certainly up there now. Thrilled that he's going to break into the top uh, top 25, top 30 here in this draft. He can make a lot of plays off the edge as well as a pass rusher. Don't sleep on him in that category. Overall, he's a terrific playmaker, great football IQ. Stat sheet stuffer. He did everything. He led the Utes in a lot of categories, forced fumbles, caught interceptions, took him for six. He can do a lot of things for you in the middle of the field and on the outside. I love Devin Lloyd. I think he's going to be a great player at the next level. Would be a pretty solid fit with the Eagles. Number 20, the Pittsburgh Steelers. I have them going with the obvious in Malik Willis. I think it's highly possible they might have to trade up to land him because Willis, he has a lot of upside. He's got a big arm. He doesn't exactly use it properly at times. Gets him in trouble. He forces a lot of turnovers, not just with his arm, but with his legs. He runs in the sacks a lot. He does a lot to hurt the team at times, but for the most part, he's an elite runner. He'll be Lamar Jackson-ish in that category right away. High upside player, I'd say. How do you feel about Malik Willis? Yeah, I think a lot of people have him as their number one quarterback in this draft class. I'm not going to be willing to say that, but I think for the Steelers here, he would really fit with that kind of mobility that you said. Of course, we're a little concerned about the turnovers, definitely the fumbles as well, but that he is very, very mobile quarterback, can make plays if he needs to. And when you have a running back like Najee Harris behind him as well, that will be a really strong offense in Pittsburgh, and they can kind of retool themselves, kind of, take that next step forward and I think Malik Willis if they can get him at 20 that is incredible if they have to trade up maybe move up a couple spots maybe swap with the Eagles and a couple a couple spots ahead of them but in general I think Malik Willis is a really good quarterback and at 20 that'd be a great pick for the Steelers yeah his mechanics are not great either but from a raw talent standpoint he is off the charts high project player I'd say and with that terrible offensive line too I think having a mobile guy like that remember Mike Tomlin even said that having a mobile QB is important that screams Malik Willis, especially when he plays in the same division where he sees Lamar twice a year. It just seems like this pick that makes the most sense. Number 21, the Patriots. You never know what they're going to do. It looks like J.C. Jackson's probably going to walk. Are you going with his replacement or are you going elsewhere? I'm going to go with Traylon Burks, the wide receiver at Arkansas. He's my favorite wide receiver in this class. The film against Alabama is just incredible to watch. He really played really well that day, and Brian Denny, a tough place to play. The Alabama defense just could not stop him. And that, even outside of that, the game against Ole Miss as well, he had a really, really strong game. Very mm-hmm. physical wide receiver, can get up, get the ball, 50-50 kind of guy. I love Traylon Burks. I think he's a really talented player. And the Patriots here would get a great player to help Mac Jones. Mac Jones had a decent year. You get Traylon Burks there. I mean, the sky's the limit for the Patriots at that point. Yeah, and those two games you talked about, the Ole Miss game, and those two games specifically, he showed different things against Ole Miss on that same – uh, he had two catches on the same drive where he went up over a defender and caught it. it showcased that length and that leaping ability, put the size good use. He was 6'3", 225. And then against Alabama, he showed his ability to outclass physical corners and burn them after the catch. He's not really specialized in yards after the catch. But in terms of being a possession receiver, utilizing the physical tools he has, he does it to a T. Burks would be a really good pick. Of course, they missed on Nikhil Harry a couple years ago. So hopefully they can get it right this time. I think Burks would certainly be a great pick. 22, Drake London is the pick for me for the Raiders. Of course, these receivers can go in any order. Drake London is our top-ranked receiver, but he goes, I think that's the fourth receiver off the board here. Just That's kind of the luck of the draw sometimes when you have a stacked, top-heavy class. London, he does a lot after the catch. 6'5", 220, I believe he is. He's got great size. Put him in the slot. Of course, he's got that size to keep raving about to put him on the outside, even though he didn't play a lot there at USC. All around, this guy is phenomenal. It takes three or four guys to bring him down after the catch. The physicality, the size, everything, former basketball player. It really shows. Drake London, per- terrific in many ways. Yeah, like you said, two-sport athlete, very physical, can play inside, outside. I actually think he's the best fit in terms of partnered with a team of the wide receivers we've taken already here with the Raiders. I think they could really use a guy like that. 
Derek Carr could use a nice target in the, on the inside of the slot. And if he needs to play on the outside, like you said, he can, which is really good to have that kind of flexibility in a rookie, play him on whatever part of the field you need to. He was, he's going to make plays. Very athletic guy, very physical guy. I love this pick for the Raiders. I think Derek Carr could use a weapon like that. They were a good team this year. That might push them over. Number 23, the Arizona Cardinals. Trent McDuffie was the selection. He's, you know, speaking about physical players, he does that. He's also pretty athletic as well. Um, very good run stopper. I think he's fluid enough to play whatever type of coverage you want. Corner isn't the biggest need, but I think pairing up McDuffie with his former Washington, well, I guess him and Byron Murphy didn't play at Washington together, but they did come from Seattle. That'd be nice to have some uh, connections there. Trent McDuffie seems to be a really good selection for Arizona. Yeah, I think the Arizona Arizona Cardinals don't have a lot of holes. They're a really polished team. And you take a guy like Trent McDuffie, who really stood out in the, what was a pretty poor Washington defense this year, kind of beefing up that cornerback room a little bit. It's not the worst room in the NFL by any standard, but if you get a guy like Trent McDuffie in there, a late first-round pick, I think that's a really good pick for the Cardinals. And like I said, stood out to me when I look at the film of the defense for the Washington for Washington this year, and I would really like this pick for the Cardinals. Yeah, don't get it confused. It was a terrible Washington offense, not the defense. They were terrific. Top-ranked passing apologies. defense, and he was a big part of it. His teammate Kyler Gordon will go on later in this mock. Two really good corners coming out of Washington. Talking about his safety, though, Jaquan Brisker, he's the pick here for me to Dallas. Seems like a great fit because he's got great football IQ. He knows when to come up and leave a crack against an opposing running back, maybe even get in a quarterback's face. I like what he can do in the as a in the you know as a box safety, even though that's not really where he plays. He's mainly a deep coverage guy. His football IQ though allows him to be kind of versatile. I think this is overall a great fit for Dallas. They're really building that defense. They keep nailing a lot of picks. They got Micah Parsons right. The defensive line has really impressed as well. Uh, the guy from Oklahoma, Neville Gallimore, just showed out. I think Jaquan Brisker's next in line for Dallas. It's one of their biggest needs. Seems like a no-brainer here for me. Yeah, Dallas has been going defense a lot recently in these last couple of drafts. I think Jaquan Brisker is a really good fit here, a no-brainer. Very very good safety. Had a great year at Penn State. I think he'd be a really good fit for the Cowboys. They could use some help there. That defense is looking really good, especially, like you said, Micah Parsons, his former teammate at Penn State. Very talented player for them already. If you take a guy like Brisker, you know, you get that sort of familiarity, good good te- a former teammate to have. I think this is a great pick. This kind of makes sense for the Cowboys. Really solid safety at Penn State. Speaking of no-brainer pick, the Bills at 25, who do you have them going with? Yeah, this is probably the easiest pick of the draft. Jordan Davis out of Georgia. He's not going to play three downs. He's going to play two downs for you, maybe second and third down. But you don't need him to play three downs when you're the Bills and you already have a really strong roster, a Super Bowl contending roster that is really one of the best teams in the AFC. Take a guy like Jordan Davis. That might just be enough to get him over the edge. An absolute freak, a massive player. Really a little concerned about the size, but – he can really make some good plays, and if he can just kind of slot in, like I said, second and third down for the Bills, that could be a great fit. The only concern with the size is that he gasses out. You've seen that in the SEC title game. But like you said, here in the NFL, if he can land with a team like the Bills, doesn't need them to be a three-down player. He'll be a terrific run stopper. This is an A-plus pick. Again, Jordan Davis to the Bills. It seems incredible if they can pick him up. That'd be nice to see. Number 26 with the Titans. I had them going for Roger McCreary. Janoris Jenkins was not very good last year. I think a sticky man coverage corner like him. He was he was the top corner in the SEC last year. He really stuck with those Alabama pass catchers for most of that game. I like the confidence he plays with. I think he's pretty sticky. Not as sticky as some of the other guys ahead of him. But all around, I think he's got a nice skill set that uh, Mike Vrabel would love to have. Yeah, the SEC's best corner fits in well with the Titans here. Like you said, had a really good game against Alabama. Very talented corner. The Titans could really use that help. I think this is a solid pick for them. Around 26, I think this is right where he fits in. Some people have him slip into the second round. I don't think he gets there. I think the Titans are going to snap him up for sure. Very talented cornerback and would really help out the Titans that could use some help there. It's not the biggest need, I would say. I don't know. I still think it's up there, even though they took Caleb Farley in the first round last year. The secondary, though, kind of needs a makeover. So add some, add another young cornerback to the lineup. I think that would be really a pick for them. Number 27, the Bucks. You know, guard Ally Marpet surprisingly retired earlier today, actually. Kenyon Green seems like a really good ideal fit, but you went with Sam Howell instead. What do you think the going on with the Bucks here? And what do you think would honestly be the best selection? So I do like Kenyon Green, but the quarterback is the most valuable position in sports. And if you get a guy like Sam Howell here, who's a really, really high football IQ, didn't have the best year at UNC, but he's a very talented quarterback, can read the play, read the field really well, can make some good plays if he needs to, can run a little bit, very good pocket passer. The Bucks are going to need a quarterback. We know what we know that that's for sure. 
yes, the offensive line might work here, but you could get someone in free agency potentially. And I think quarterback is a little more of a pressing need. And Sam Howell is just a talented guy. If you can grab him here at 27, that is a really good pick. Yeah, he's another one of those guys going to really rip it, really fits on the RPO offense. He uses legs a lot this past season. He did it very effectively. He was he was a like kind of like Matt Corral, but he used he was more of a high IQ runner, I would say. He wasn't just running into piles of bodies looking to move the chains, which I mean, there's nothing wrong with either or, but I like what he does from a football IQ standpoint. I think he's got uh, pretty high end accuracy. At times he gets shaky, but I think Hal Really good pick. He had to carry his offense throughout this past year. I thought he did a pretty good job of doing so. Leads us to number 28. The Packers, of course, there's an ongoing saga where we don't know who's coming back. But considering we'll just considering as of this moment, Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, all those guys are still there. I think Trevor Penning at offensive tackle seems like the best pick. Of course, this will get shaken up a bit. They can even go with another receiver as well. I'm not really sure what's the best option for the Packers, but I think Penning is a very good project tackle that could really – slide in there and be a year one starter yeah if you look at the roster as it is right now i think trevor penning's probably the pick you could make a case for jahan jahan donson out of penn state the wide receiver but i'm gonna say i'm gonna say penning is probably the probably the pick here very talented offense tackle in northern iowa really good really good pass protection i think he'd be really great obviously you need to protect Aaron Rodgers. he comes back he's getting up there in age those hits you know as you get older the hits they they're harder they you know it's hard to recover from that got to protect your quarterback especially if you end up paying him 50 million or whatever that whatever he said, what he says is worth not fifty million, but whatever whatever he says he's worth, they're going to pay him that. You got to protect them. It's worth the investment. I think offensive tackle here is a good idea. Even though the Packers usually have no interest in giving him any help whatsoever, so it's probably going to be a defensive end or something. But offensive tackle would make sense. Moving to twenty nine, the Dolphins. Who do you have going with here? Or is it my pick? It's my pick. But either way, we both agreed on Chris Olave to the Dolphins. Two was clearly the future there. A lot of stuff going on in Miami. Mike McDaniel, though, an offensive coach. He's going to want to keep adding some weapons. Fundamentally sound as they come is Chris Olave, terrific route runner. I think this would be a really good fit because he, he's probably not going to be a number one receiver at the next level, which would be perfect for him. He could be a number two along the same, alongside Waddle in the slot. I think it's a really good pick. Yeah, you want to get weapons for Tua to Tungavello. And if you're going to get a guy like Chris Olave, who can be a number two receiver just behind Waddle, that's exactly where he fits in. That's kind of why he falls a little bit because he's not going to be that number one guy that's that star out of the gate. But you can kind of grow him a little bit, get him get him situated with the system right behind Jalen Waddle. Really, really good fit in Miami. And giving Tua to Tungavello weapons is exactly what he needs. I think the Dolphins are a really good team. They have a bright future. And giving a guy like Chris Olave for, as a weapon is a great weapon to have. Moving to number 30, another team that could probably invest in a receiver, Kansas City. I think they owe defense here. Safety, Daxton Hill, an athletic freak. Got limited experience, but I like what he brings to the table. It's an all-around safety. I think he's got the abilities to make plays up towards the line of scrimmage as well. But in the back end, they really need someone who's more fluid. and has got some good football IQ. It's really been a weak spot of this defense. I think Daxton Hill would be a really good fit for KC. Yeah, he lacks experience, but in general, he's a very strong athlete. I think Kansas City has a very strong roster across the board. You could you could maybe go wide receiver here, but I think Daxon Hill is going to be a smart pick. Get a nice piece for the defense that can work out in the future. I thought they had the best draft of any team last year. Um, at you know right after the draft and after the season, I think that even proved it even more. They had a, they did a phenomenal job last year retooling the whole line. So I think a high football uh, or a high IQ selection makes sense here in safety. Moving to the Bengals at thirty one, we all know they're taking an offensive lineman. Which one you got them going with? I got him taking Bahad Rahami out of Central Michigan. Probably the best available offense tackle at this point. Very talented player. Very good in the run blocking. You know, the Bengals need offensive line if they're going to protect Joe Burrow. He got sacked way too many times this postseason. I think this is the pick. Obviously, they got to go offensive line. You could maybe make the case for someone else that's still on the board, but I think he is the best fit that is left available. He had one of the highest run and pass blocking grades, according to PFF, this past season. He needed a lot. He really shined. At the senior bowl, his physicality and whatnot. He's got some pretty good size. I think he's like 6'8", 320 or something. Apparently he was a former quarterback as well, which is pretty crazy. So he's still learning the offensive line position. He just had a big year. So I think this would be a really good pick for Cincinnati. I think anybody on the offensive line would be a good pick for them, giving up 87 sacks in the Super Bowl. Number 32, I went off Jahan Dotson. I think this is the biggest wild card pick of this first round. Really, nobody has any idea who's going at number 32 or what position. I think Dotson continuing to improve that, you know, talent on the offensive side makes sense. He's not exactly a burner, but he can still light it up, uh, you know, vertically because he's got a lot of great moves, got that repertoire in his bag. I think he can uh, 
provide a lot from a pure hand standpoint, route running standpoint. Dotson seems like a good pick to round off for the first round. Yeah, the, the Lions could really do a lot here because they have a lot of holes to fill, but I think Dotson is probably the best pick available. Great wide receiver out of Penn State. Really good route runner, really good hands. Love the moves he can make. He can break away from defenders. I think this is really good for the Lions. They could use some help on the offense. The defense has some holes, but the offense, you can't, you can't neglect the offense. And getting a guy like Dotson, the 32nd pick, will be a really nice wide receiver. Kind of a bit of an underrated wide receiver in this class that is, that is pretty top-heavy. I like Dotson a lot. I think this is a good fit. Kicking off round two, the Jaguars. We went with Evan Neal in the first round. Who do you have him going with to kick off the second? So I have him going with Trayvon Walker out of Georgia. I think he's a really good fit for them. Very talented player. One of the better players on that Georgia defense. Just slips a little bit. I think the Jaguars here get a really good pick. They could use some help on defense after going offense in the first round. They had terrible de- had terrible defensive performance this year, especially against the run. I think Trayvon Walker is a great fit. Yeah, there's a handful of versatile defensive linemen on the board that the Jaguars should likely benefit from. That's certainly the pick I'm rooting for them to take. Trayvon Walker would make a lot of sense, though. He's versatile. He mainly shines as a run stopper, though. He can also get it down as an interior pass rusher. I think, uh, you know, he's another one of those fluid athletes. Walker would be a really good pick. Moving to number 34, speaking of another guy who's pretty versatile, DeMarvin Leal. I'd like to see him play with a little more heart. I'd like to build up a better motor But the Lions. I think this would be a phenomenal pick. Great start to the draft if they could end up with Leal, who he's got great size. He's a heck of an athlete for being how big he is. I like what he does with his hands. I didn't exactly have the season I imagined he would, but I think he's another high upside player. Yeah, there's a lot of potential here with Leal. I'm a little concerned with the amount of effort he puts in. Definitely had a bit of a poor season at Texas A&M. But the Lions get a guy like this. If he starts working hard in that locker room, that could really be a very high upside pick here. Very high ceiling for this guy. I like him a lot out of Texas A&M. Good defensive lineman. And the Lions could really use some help there. Yeah, he was a top five pick early in mock drafts in 2021. He's fallen down here a little bit from one Texas A&M Aggie to another one. You have the Jets taking Kenyon Green. Yeah, the Jets could use some interior offensive line help, and Kenyon Green is a really talented player at Texas A&M. He's fallen a little bit, had not the best year, but I think he's a really good player, and the Jets could really use a lot of help on the offensive line. You know, they took an offensive line earlier earlier last year, didn't hasn't really worked out yet. So I think Kenyon Green at 35 is a good pick, considering how many picks they have in general in this draft. Take a guy like this, you can work on him, kind of mold him into that type of player you need. Yeah, he played anywhere on that old line in college. I think NFL is strictly uh, going to be on the interior. like what he's got from a fundamental standpoint. He's got some really good characteristics that could really allow him to be a high upside player. I think as a pass blocker, he's pretty impressive as well. 36, the Giants. I went with Zion Johnson. I really like what we like. We both like what he brings to the table. He's a really stiff blocker, big body. That was a highly impressive O-line he played for at Boston College. How do you feel by Zion? Yeah, Boston College is a great year at the offensive line. I think this is the kind of pick the Giants absolutely need. Very talented off- interior offensive lineman. Really good guy. Going to work hard for you. Going to put a lot of effort in. Going to be really good on the run run defense, on the run blocking. I think this is a great pick for the Giants at 36. They can get this guy plus the offensive tackle they took in the first round. That is a great draft for the Giants. The Texans kind of need help everywhere. What's the pick here to help boost a roster that's in desperation? So I think they're going to go with uh, Kinnear Elam, the quarterback out of cornerback out of Florida. Very good cornerback. You know the Texans need a ton of help, but I think that cornerback room could really use some help. And I think he is a very talented player out of out of Florida. Florida didn't have the best defense across the board this year, but he looked good at, throughout most of the season. Very good, very strong player. I like this pick a lot for the Texans. And he's a heck of an athlete. Of course, there's some bad tape out there where he's not playing his best coverage, but he's very physical as well. I think when you have a roster that's kind of in that mode, like I just brought up, a physical guy who plays with aggression, plays with a big heart, that's something you kind of need in a team that's rebuilding. I think he already went at corner. Might not be the best fit or the best pick here, but I like any guy who can play with aggressiveness. That would certainly help everybody in the locker room. So I think this would be a pretty good selection for them. 38, the Jets. We finally addressed the offensive line a little bit. with Darian Kennard, a big-bodied pass blocker. I think this would be a really good selection for them, especially right after getting Kenyon Green. They could really repair this whole offensive line in one draft, I think, here with the selections they have. Yeah, a massive pass blocker. Kentucky had a great, great offensive line this year. Of course, their O-line coach was just hired by Alabama. They had a really strong offensive line in the SEC. This is a great pick for the Jets. They can really use the help on the offensive line. They can, with these two picks with Kenyon Green and Kennard, 
they could just basically restructure the whole offensive line and, and protect their asset in Zach Wilson, who they invested the second overall pick with in last year. I'm very excited to see what the Jets do in this draft. If they can really add some defensive pieces and some offensive linemen here. I mean, it's really ideal looking back at it now, what the Jets have taken. Looking at 39, though, a team that also needs offensive line help. Daniel Falil was the selection for you here. Six eight four. What is he? Six eight six nine. Four hundred pounds. This guy is a brick of a tackle. Obviously, that size sometimes gets him in trouble, where people can get below him against the run. From a pure pass blocking standpoint, I think if you coach him up a bit, he could really be an asset to any team that drafts him. Yeah, he's a very talented player. If you look back at some of the film, especially that game against Ohio State at the start of the year, before their running back got injured and tore his ACL, I believe that's what happened. Mm -hmm. He was running all over the place with really good blocking, a very talented run blocker. I think this is a great fit for the Bears. The Bears don't have a first-round pick, but they could really use some help in the offensive line. Moving to number 40, the Broncos here. Arnold Ebikidi, a guy we both love. Um, For some reason on the website we're using, he's ranked as number 58. I don't agree with that. He's got terrific bend, nice balance. Sometimes he gets taken out of the play if his first move is not there. So I'd like to see him develop a little bit more in his bag of tricks and play with some more aggression. But overall, I think he's got some great peer football uh, technicalities that will be an asset here, especially for Denver. Yeah, high football IQ. Definitely could use a couple more moves. Like you said, I'm a little concerned about some of those poor first moves. I think this is a really good pick for Denver. They go quarterback, then they go edge rush in the second round. This would be a really good draft for them. They have a strong roster, but you throw a guy like Ebikidi in there, it makes that defense just that much better. Very talented player. This would be a great pick. Looking at Seattle at 41, they've kind of backed themselves into a hole. John Snyder, he's usually one of the better GMs in the league. The last couple of years, he's really reached for some picks. Um, they need offensive line help, but guess what? There's no one I'm really feeling here on offensive line. I'm sure you feel the same way. So who are the Seahawks going with at 41? I got them going with Devontae Wyatt, the defensive line from Georgia. Very talented player. That Georgia defense was so good this year. And, of course, the offensive line help is there, but I just don't think there's anyone that's worth taking at this late in the draft. Maybe if you move up, trade off a little bit on draft day. But as of right now, taking a defensive lineman from Georgia, I think that's a good start. They could really use some help with the defensive line. And he's a very talented player. Great run stopper, massive player. It's pretty crazy how quick he is for his size. It doesn't really make sense that we just said we wouldn't take an old lineman at 41 just for us to turn around and take one at 42. But there's a difference between these two rosters. Washington does not have the big needs like Seattle does. I think they can afford to overdraft just slightly here with a nice tackle with Nicholas Petit Ferrer. He kind of got bodied against Aiden Hutchinson but overall, though. I think he's got some good characteristics, especially as a pass blocker. I think this would make more sense for them to reach just a tad bit than it would for Seattle, too. Yeah, considering the strengths like we were discussing earlier when they take Matt Corral, this team is a very strong roster. They're just a piece or two away from contending and definitely being one of the favorites in the NFC East. So you can reach a little bit here, take an offensive tackle. Like you said, had a tough time against Aiden Hutchinson. But when you're playing against a freak like that, some things, some things are bound to happen. I think he's a very talented offensive tackle. Bit of a reach at 42. Maybe he falls a little bit to later 50s, but I think this would be a nice fit for the commanders. Number 43, the Falcons, another team. I'm very interested to see what happens with their draft. Who do you have them going with? Do you have them beefing up that defense or you get them some more help on offense? So you do look at the defense and think that you can maybe make a defensive pick here. And some people are even talking quarterback, but I'm going to go with wide receiver and David Bell to Purdue. Very strong wide receiver, very talented player. Bit underrated considering the strength of this wide receiving draft class. I think he's a very talented player. I think he'll fit well in the Falcons offense. You want to give someone to help Matt Ryan. There's so many questions on on offense for the Falcons. They, their wide receiver core is depleted. It could They could be losing most of their starters due to free agency or other things like that. And I think David Bell will be a really good fit. And if you're going to look for a quarterback next year, you want to have some weapons for that quarterback. I think David Bell is a great pick here. 43 is a very interesting pick. I think it's a perfect spot for them, looking at the board of who's still available. This is going to be an interesting selection. I'm going to be waiting for months to find out who they take. Again, Calvin Ridley might not be back. And the receiving core is already depleted. David Bell will make a lot of sense. He's not going to wow you with speed or size. But when it comes to route running, fundamentals, hands, focus, Yards after catch, he's not the he's not the quickest, but he, he gets to that second level. He can make people miss. I think David Bell is a very good pick. Kind of a quiet guy in this draft. Um, I think he's really going to be an impressive player, though. It would make a lot of sense for the Falcons. He's also versatile. Put him in the slot. Put him out wide. He'll make some good plays for you. 44, I went with Cam Thomas, another guy who, for some reason, seems to be kind of underrated on the big board we're looking at. Relentless off the edge. Of course, he kind of gasses himself out because of how hard he goes in the first three quarters. Three-down player, high motor. He's got a heck of 
uh, repertoire of moves that I like what he's got on the spin move to the swim. He's got a lot of nice moves. I think 44, Cameron Thomas would be a very ideal selection as they give Miles Garrett a counterparter to work with. Yeah, he was the Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year at San Diego State. We were thinking about Edge in the first round for the Browns. We're thinking a guy like Cam Thomas at 44. That's a really solid pick. He does get a little tired, but I like the, the amount of moves he has. He can change it up, a lot of variety there. And when you partner someone like him with Miles Garrett, that could be really strong for this Browns defense. Okay, number 45, the Ravens. Who do you have them going with? So I have him taking Logan Hall out of Houston. I think he's a very talented defensive lineman. He, we had him fall in the 64 in our last mock draft. And honestly, there, I thought there was no way that he would fall that far this time. Going to the Ravens here, they need some help on defense. They went defense in the first round. They'll go defense again here. Hall's a very good run-stopping defensive lineman. I like him a lot, and I think this is a great fit. Yeah, um, Logan Hall, versatile guys, an interior pass rusher, can also do some work on the outside as well. It's going to be a very interesting draft for the Ravens if they can really beef that up on their pass rushing side of things. Of course, the secondary needs a little bit of help. They're also incredibly beat up in that category last year, so I think they'll turn to the D-line. Number 46 for Minnesota. Speaking of the D-line, I think Travis Jones, this guy, one of my favorite players in the draft, he is ferocious. Defensive tackle and corner, two of their biggest needs, and they shore those up in the first two picks. Great hands, very strong. He is tough. Playing at UConn, of course, um, not many people watch them whatsoever, but if you actually sit and watch his film, especially against Clemson, it certainly stands out. He's by far the best player on the field. You can be a casual and recognize that. Yeah, easily the best player on the field for UConn this year. Had a good senior bowl as well. Very talented player. The Vikings here grab a nice grab a nice piece in Travis Jones. They could really help use the help on the defense. They go defense in first and second round here. I think Travis Jones is a great fit for the Vikings. Number 47, the Colts. I'm not so keen on them taking a tackle with who's available here. Carson Wentz, I guess. They're potentially trying to move on from him. What makes the most sense for a team that's got a really good roster? So the Colts have a fantastic roster, and I don't think there's anyone that's really worth taking on the offensive line or offensive tackle. So I'm going to take Desmond Ritter, the quarterback from Cincinnati. He had a really good year at Cincinnati, of course. They had a great regular season and also had a hung in there with Alabama in the playoffs. I think Desmond Ritter is a really strong quarterback, strong arm, very talented. And if you're going to move on from Carson Wentz, maybe you flip him for some late-round pick, something like that. If you can get Desmond Ritter at 47, that's a nice prize to have. You can build around that. They have a great running game with Jonathan Taylor already, so you get a guy like Ritter in there. Very very nice fit here for the Colts. I think this works out well. Yeah, of course, there's some knock on him for his accuracy. It's obviously not great, not very polished in that area. But I remember watching the Notre Dame game and going, yeah, this guy is the real deal in terms of being an NFL draft prospect. Just the way he wafts it downfield. He has no problem pushing it with some ease. He's also pretty mobile as a runner. He's got pretty good speed in the open field as well. I think Ritter is kind of a wild card. A lot of people have varying opinions on him. See what happens. A lot of people very watched the Alabama game and weren't impressed. I mean, he didn't have a lot of help from his OC or his skilled position players. Thought he did a lot of good things in that game. He, you know, shied away from making big mistakes. Um, I didn't think the moment was too big for him or anything like that. I just don't think anybody else really gave him a lot of help. I thought overall it was a pretty impressive game for him. Great season, great career at Cincinnati. Wish him the best of luck moving forward. 48, though. Nicobe Dean was the pick to shore up that terrible run defense. Well, guess what? The run and defensive tackles continues. I went with Federian Mathis. That's all he does. He's a complete gap clogger on that interior. He actually impressed it quite a bit as a pass rusher this year, I thought, in the interior for Alabama. He was certainly their leader up front. I'm sure you're loving this pick, just like you kind of liked that Nicobe Dean one in the first round. Yeah, I think this is a great fit for the Chargers. Like you said, kind of impressed a little bit this year getting to the quarterback for Alabama, very talented player. Slips a little bit in this draft. A couple people had him a little bit higher at the start of the year, but I love Fidarian Mathis. I think this is a great fit for the Chargers. In terms of fit-wise, getting those two picks with Jacoby Dean and Fidarian Mathis, I don't think you get a better pair of picks in terms of fit they need. They need run run defense help. These two guys are going to stop the run. This is a great pick for the Chargers. They got plenty of cap space to fill out those other needs as well. This is a big offseason for LA. 49, New Orleans, who's the selection for you? So I made a mistake earlier saying talking about Washington's defense, saying it was poor. I meant to say their offense. But Kyler Gordon, the cornerback out of Washington, very talented player. The Saints have a lot of questions across the board, but they could use some help in the cornerback room. Kyler Gordon is a really good piece. I think he fits in well there. I like him a lot. Good good film. I think this is a great pick for the Saints. Yeah, it's not the biggest need, but I think Dennis Allen would love to have a guy like this who can help in the run. He's very athletic. He can drop back in coverage, make some good plays for you. One of those guys flying under the radar. I'm pretty sure he'll be at the combine. Interested to see what he runs in the 40. Number 50, Dolphins, Drake Jackson was the selection here. Big-bodied guy. He's got some nice size. He's versatile. He can draw back in the coverage. He can rush the passer. Didn't have the best 
senior year or final year, I guess you could say, at USC. Didn't make a lot of waves against the run. I think uh, he's another one of those guys you coach up, and he can be an asset in multiple different ways. Yeah, huge, huge edge rusher. Edge rusher. A little concerned about his year this year. Did not really make any impact in the run defense, like you said. I think this is a good fit for the Dolphins. The Dolphins have a really strong roster across the board. You get a guy like Drake Jackson that you can work on, kind of a project player. I don't think edge rusher is an extreme need right now for the for the Dolphins, but if you take a guy like Drake Jackson, you work on him a little bit, you build him up. Maybe in two, three years, he'll be a really talented player. Oh, look at that. The Eagles, again, four picks in the top 51. That's highly impressive what they could potentially do in this draft. Who's the next guy you like to introduce to Philly? Fantastic work from the Eagles front office, but I think Kingsley Egebare out of South Carolina, the edge rusher, going back-to-back edge rushers here. Very talented player, underrated SEC edge rusher. I really like what he brings to the table. South Carolina had a good year on defense this year, and he was a major part of that. I think this is a great fit for the Eagles. He's got a pretty quick first step, some violent hands, drop backs in the coverage. Another one of those players that was high upside, you can use in different ways. Interesting edge rushing class because you have a few guys out here really can make some waves. Number 52, the Steelers, they really need to shore up that line. A bit of a reach here, according to the most big boards, Jamari Salar. He had great work as a tackle against Aiden Hutchinson. A lot of people project him to be on the interior. I think he provides a lot in terms of physicality and being able to get a push up front, exactly what they need. I think this would be a pretty ideal pick, even if it is a bit of a reach. Yeah, considering what's available on the offensive line front and on, the, on what's left on the board, this is a bit of a reach for the Steelers here, but they do really need help there. A lot of people thought they might go offensive line last year. They went Najee Harris instead. I think this is a good fit for them. Like you said, had a decent game against Aiden Hutchinson. I think he's a very talented player. You throw him on the inside, very strong hands. I like this pick for, for the Steelers a lot. Yeah, they're kind of in a tight little hole here because their run defense was awful. They need that right there. Their O-line is terrible. Their tre- the, the trenches need a lot of help. They also need a quarterback, too. They're just not in the best of situations right now. We'll see what happens this offseason. 53, the Las Vegas Raiders. Who do you see them taking here at 53 overall? I have them going with Christian Harris out of Alabama. Bit of a disappointing year from Christian Harris. A lot of people thought he'd come back to Tuscaloosa, but he decided to to, uh, go to the draft, and I think this is a nice fit for him at 53 with the Raiders. They could really use some help with the linebacking core. I think he's a good fit. I like him a lot. But like I said, just a little disappointed this year that left a little bit to do desired on that Alabama defense. I really was convinced he was going to come back, use his last year of eligibility, but he decided to forego it, go to the draft. That's going to cost him a little bit. He's going to fall a little bit because of that. Cause I think he could have really polished his, himself off and got a little bit higher of a draft stock for, ne- for next year. But this is a good pick for the Raiders. Nice fit. I like the pick. Sideline, the sideline linebacker really makes a lot of stuff happen on the outside, on the perimeter. Harris, good pick. Raiders, um, pretty good roster. I think they got high-end potential. Harris will certainly be an asset there. 54. I went with Darian Kendrick. Um, he, I don't believe he allowed a touchdown this past season coming over from Clemson to Georgia. He had some plays where he got beat downfield. I think he's better. Uh, I don't know what he's better in zone or man, but I think overall he's pretty impressive in all facets of his coverage skills. Solid when it comes to physicality. J.C. Jackson apparently is on the way out. Regardless, though, I think they like to upgrade their cornerback position a bit. Yeah, great pickup for the Bulldogs out of the transfer portal. I like his man coverage a lot. I think this is a good fit. I think he'd be great in New England. They could really use some – if they lose a couple players here in the cornerback room, I think he's a good fit. Didn't give him a touchdown, like you said, which is always an impressive stat for a corner. I like this pick a lot for the Patriots. They could have a really solid draft. And just ripping things off right quick, we went with three straight edge rushers, with Nick Benito to the Cardinals, Maja Sanders to the Cowboys, and then Sam Williams to the Bills. Which one here stands out most, and which one would honestly be the best fit? So I like Sam Williams to the Bills. Of course, the Bills, like we said earlier, have such a strong roster. There's not really any glaring needs for the Bills. They're a Super Bowl contending team. I like Sam Williams, kind of a project player. You can work on him a little bit, get him comfortable on that edge rushing. He had a good year at Mississippi this year. I liked what he, I liked a lot of his film. I think this is a, that's a great pick for the Bills. Yeah, Benito out of Oklahoma to the Cardinals. I think this is a good fit for him as well. Um, very athletic off the edge. He obviously didn't have the biggest season that we were expecting, but he's very fluid as an athlete. He can drop back into coverage and make some plays. Of course, I went to high school, Maja Sanders. Uh, the Cowboys continue to beef up their defense. Um, I think him and Brisker, to kick things off for the draft for Dallas, would be really good because um, their offense obviously has a lot of talent. The defense is getting there as well. They continue to beef things up. This is going to be a really tough team. I think they've done a good job with this roster. They just need to start winning some playoff games to really make it pay off. 58, the Falcons, I went with Lewis Sign, a hard-hitting safety. He can come up and make plays in the box. His coverage skills aren't not really to rave about, but I think his physicality, the football IQ, the aggression, 
those three characteristics all really stand out. Falcons need help at the safety position. This would honestly make the most sense. He's out, he's uh, the best available, too, other than Jalen Pitry. How do you feel about signing to Atlanta? Yeah, I love his ability just to lay out a receiver if necessary. Very aggressive player, and considering he's the best available on the board, coming from Georgia, staying in the state of Georgia, I think this makes a lot of sense. Lewis signs a very talented player. This makes a lot of sense to me for the Falcons. Easy pick. What also makes a good bit of sense, George Pickens was the pick for you. Ted Green Bay, obviously – he um, coming off that torn ACL. I don't think he's really eye popping in terms of what he can do as from a versatile standpoint, because he's not really that type of receiver, but he's got some athletic gifts. I think he can win with his size on the inside, with these slant routes, these inside curls or something. And then he's got the height and the jump ball paralysis to bring down a deep ball. So I think George Pickens would honestly be a really good fit. It seems like that makes that just it screams Packers all over is what you told me a few days ago. Yeah, this is a really fun pick for me. This is kind of like the pick that I like to see the Packers make. He, he He's a really strong wide receiver. Of course, he wasn't in our top 10 when we did it. We ranked the wide receiver. Some people were saying, why is he not in the top 10? Top 10? Of course, I have concerns about the ACL injury. He's a jump ball specialist. I love that. I think this is a really good fit for the Packers. They could they could use a nice weapon to kind of entice Aaron Rodgers to come back. Hey, oh, hey, we got George Pickens for you. I like this pick a lot. This just screams Packers to me at 59. Yeah, I think his skill set is just slightly limited. That's why we didn't have him in the top 10, but he's certainly going to be an asset for the right team. I think he's a great player all around. He was one of my Blitnikoff finalists um, coming into the year. Of course, he didn't play much at all, so we didn't really get to see what would happen, but I thought he was going to have a great season in college from an NFL skill set standpoint, though I think he's a little bit limited. Number 60, I went with the Bucks picking up Perry on Winfrey. Of course, they can still look to guard, but um, I'm not really – I'm not really raving over anybody still available up front. Perry and Winfrey makes a lot of sense. He's another one of those big movers from Mobile. as an interior pass rusher, a guy who loves to use his hands. Nice lower body. The Bucks, um, they can kind of do whatever on defense. They've really got a nice core going. I think adding another defensive tackle next to Vita Vea would be one of the priorities. Yeah, considering how strong of a, a, a time he had in the senior bowl, I think this is a good fit for the Bucks. Their defense is really strong. Add a guy like that, get him couple reps this season, get him comfortable with the system. I think this is a great pick for the Bucks. Moving to 61, the 49ers. Who's the selection for you? I got him taking the cornerback, Martin Emerson, out of Mississippi State. Very strong corner. I liked what he did this year for the Bulldogs. They had a, they had a better year than most people expected. They looked good on defense and on offense. I like Martin Emerson a lot here. 49ers don't have a lot of picks this draft due to trading for quarterback last year. I think this is a good pick, and this will be a nice, nice fit for the 49ers. There's a handful of cornerbacks on the board that – are pretty intriguing. Emerson, the best available, seems like the best fit because um, the secondary is not very good. I think they need to upgrade their cornerback room. Emerson's certainly a talent. Playing next to Emmanuel Forbes, those two had a really good season at MSU. 62, Kansas. Um, I didn't go receiver in the first round because I think there's some guys later in the second and third round they could potentially get. And Wandale Robinson was one of those. I think He's a twitchy athlete and put in the slot, very undersized, but that's going to allow him to strictly remain in the slot. I think Kansas City would certainly find a way to exploit his skill set and get him the ball. So I think that's honestly a really good fit, but a type of selection for the Chiefs. Yeah, I love the fit here for Wando Robinson. They could really use some wide receivers, give Patrick Mahomes weapons. You want to give your star player some weapons. I think Wando Robinson's a really good fit. I like this pick for the Chiefs. Looking at Cincinnati, again, it's an offensive lineman, but who are you going with on this selection? It's got to be an offensive lineman, and for me, it's Sean Ryan, the offensive tackle at UCLA. Didn't have the best year this year for the Bruins, but I think he's a very talented player considering what's left. And, you know, when you get down to 63, there's not going to be a whole lot left in terms of offensive tackles. But if you can get a guy like him, maybe you can mold him a little bit, take a couple of years, and be a really helpful fit for the Bengals. Yeah, you know, I don't really know much about him, but I know that UCLA ran the ball very well this past season, and I'm sure he was a big reason why. I've not had the opportunity to watch any tape on him, but um, best available – Seems like a common sense type of pick. Number 64, the Broncos, Quay Walker. There's a lot of people who think he might go at the back end of the first round, but right here we've at the final pick of the second. Quay Walker out of Georgia, another one of those guys. It was a heavy second round for the Bulldogs in our mock. What kind of stands out about Quay? Yeah, in our last mock draft, we had the Broncos taking Logan Hall, but if you can't get Logan Hall, I think he's going to go a little bit higher than that. Quay Walker would be a really good fit. They really do. They could use some help on that defense. Even though they're a very strong roster, get a guy like Clay Walker and then nice little fit piece in there. I think the Broncos can contend really quickly if they get a guy like him. 
Very talented player out of Georgia. I like this pick at 64. You can't go wrong here for me with the Broncos pick at 64. Yeah, Walker, a very good tackler. Nice short area burst. I like the instincts he has. Typical Georgia Bulldog. That's going to wrap everything up for this episode, though. Nick, appreciate you joining me to do this. This was fun. 3.0 is in the books. Uh, we'll see what happens with the combine. We'll have one out again here in a couple weeks. Yeah, thanks as always. Appreciate you guys listening, and we'll see how this combine goes. Yes, sir. See you guys next time. Like, subscribe, comment. See you later.